going to be wielding this giant 80 watt laser cutter for my friends at Montport. But first, let me show how I got it in here. Like you saw with my Sino CNC machine, whenever I need something done around the house or something very heavy moved, I call on the neighborhood uncles. No, not my biological uncles. Uncle and auntie is just a term of respect for older people in China. These are older men who do odd jobs around the neighborhood. And my dad always taught me that part of being a good neighbor is if you're doing okay, making sure that your neighbors are doing okay also. So I try to hire local whenever I can and I don't bargain too much, too hard. Normally, I'd make them lunch also, but it's 3 p.m. and they said they've already eaten. I made them promises to stay and eat something next time though. I've taken the plastic off and removed the tie that was securing the gantry. Let me show you what's next before we can fire it up. Now, normally for a laser cutter this size, we'd have a chiller. But they've sent a water pump and a large tub of water to dump the heat and keep the laser cool. It's not very elegant, but it's a common way to do it and it should work fine. I don't have the steel water handy, so I'm using filter and I've added some algaecide to it. If I was using it longer than a couple of weeks, I'd use the steel water. But since I'm going to drink it and they said they are going to flush the machine out with the steel water when they get it back, so probably no need. You're going to need an exhaust hose and fan. Mine is 220 volts, 750 watts. I will not go with much less than that for a machine this size. You don't want any smoke or fumes leaking out. Now, this is just a loaner machine for the next few weeks. So I have the hose running out the front door. Of course, you'll want something more permanent. Okay, I'm going to remove these covers from the mirrors. Okay, now let's turn it on and see how it looks. All right, and now it is time I load some file in light burns and test it. All right, I've got this big piece of two color board. White on top, black at the bottom. And the cool thing about this machine is you can unlock it if uh, the material size is out of the range. Let me do that. Open it here.
Sorry the exhaust fan I bought is really noisy and on top of that they're digging up the road outside so I'm gonna go back and voice over as much of the audio as I can so you can understand me more clearly. This is Lightburn, the application that prepares files for the laser cutter. It's extremely powerful software and I would not consider using this kind of commercial laser engraver without it. What I have here is a little sign for my security cameras outside. As most of you know, I use face recognition and some other tricks with my cameras. By assigning colors to the different parts of the vector art I created, and then assigning laser power and speed settings to those colors, I can tell the mount lasers what to cut, what to engrave, and how deep. By burning off just the white top layer of the two color material I have in the machine, I can expose the black layer beneath it and quickly and easily make a sign. So I've used the uh, sponge to clean a little bit and then I can hang on the wall. This, this looks cool. Most people use laser cutters mostly for decorative purpose. Engraving signs, making lightweight little models, maybe some enclosures. I like to use mine for structural stuff, enclosures and durable parts. Right now, I'm going to show you how I do that by making a simple gearbox. I use this website gear generator to make the gears. It costs a few dollars and there are free alternatives, but I like this one. And I just drop the gears into Tinkercad as SVG files. I have a mock-up of the whole assembly here. I just lower the gear with the holes I added below the work plane and that will slice it there and let me export it as an SVG for the laser. Now the key to fabricating strong objects with your laser cutter is using the right materials and the right construction techniques. Neither acrylic or laser ply, the two most common materials to laser cut is very strong structurally. Polycarbonate is much better. But in my opinion, the real dream material is POM, otherwise known as Exotel, or by its brand name, Darren. It's incredibly strong and resilient, and about as tough as you can get and not be metal. You generally don't have to use bearings with it because it basically acts as a bushing. The main caveat to POM is it's very hard to glue. Let me show you how we get around that. The trick is to use the POM in layers. As many as you need, anything is strong enough if it's thick enough. Then bolt or pin those layers together. Here's how I use spring pins to make the gears. This is super super strong. You could run some serious power through this. And unlike a 3D printer, it's very fast to laser cut POM. 
There are some links to more tips for working with LaserCut POM in the description box. To be honest, I don't do a lot of stuff like this, but laser cut models are a popular service and if you're running your laser cutter for business or want to make gifts, it's certainly something you do a lot of. They are fast and cheap to make, but time consuming to assemble, which suits some people who are interested in model making. The link to this model is in the description box. What I'm going to do is make a disposable dressmaker dummy out of my 3D body scan which most of you have seen before and about $30 in cardboard and wooden dowels. That way I can leave it with a good seamstress or if I don't get it back, it's no problem. There are a lot of ways to slice the model for laser cutting but today I'm going to use an old copy of Slicer for Fusion 360. I've bought a stack of 4x550x800 by by mm cardboard that fits the cutting area of the mount port. And I've set that as my material. As you can see, it automatically laid them out. It even automatically figures out where to put the wood support dowels. I can see step by step how to assemble them. Now I open each file in Lightburn and it will engrave the number of the piece so I know the order to assemble it in and cut out the outline. The final product will be exactly to scale and match my size and measurements. It takes a while to cut out all the pieces, but it's easy work and kind of relaxing. I'm doing this with cardboard, not 3D printing, because part of using a dressmaker's dummy is pinning the fabric to it and that would be a little tough even with 3D printed TBU. And it would take a lot longer and cost a lot more. Then I use a glue stick and the dowels to assemble it all. Okay, now that you have an idea of what you can do with a laser cutter this size, let's talk about how this Mumport 81 machine compares to other laser cutters. Basically, with any decent quality commercial Chinese laser cutter, if you spend the same as a Girlforge or laser box, you get a steel enclosure, much larger cutting area, and much higher power in exchange for sacrificing a lot of ease of use. Since Lightburn came on the market though, things have gotten a lot better. Lightburn helps close that gap and makes your commercial laser almost as smart as a Girlforge or laser box, at least in terms of intuitive operation. In terms of total features, I'd say Lightburn offers a few more powerful features, but you are looking at a slightly steeper learning curve. Nothing ridiculous though. If you can operate a sewing machine, the cow cutter, or 3D printer, you have no trouble with Lightburn and a commercial laser cutter like this one. So, moving on to our pros and cons. Cons. It's huge. It's heavy. Look at this thing. If you have space for it, great. But if you just have a crafting room and not a garage or workshop, you probably want to look at a smaller laser engraver like the Girlforge or Laserbox. Or check out the Mumport site, where they have smaller models with less power but from the same factory, so comparable build quality. Next, it doesn't come with a chiller to keep the laser cool. That actually worked out okay. The bucket of water did not get warm, but if I was using the laser all day, I don't want a chiller. 
Bumpo told me they plan to update it soon. But as always, I will be what's in front of me, not what the company promises to deliver. You'll be able to get up and running with this setup and it works great. But budget for a chiller if you plan to use it more than four hours a day or so. Big engraver means big exhaust. I don't trust indoor filters for laser cutters. There are just too many complex compounds that are released when cutting to be sure of extracting them all. So with this laser, you are going to need a 150 millimeter hole to the outside somewhere. If you have it in your garage, no problem. You can just put the blower near the door facing outward. Last, no camera. I'm used to the camera on my laser box. This one does not have a camera. I'm being a little picky here. This is an industrial laser cutter. Cameras are very consumer level feature for inexperienced users. The good news is Lightburn supports cameras and you can add one for around $100. It's not a critical feature, just one of those things that takes a bit of brain power out of the whole operation when you can see what you are doing both from the machine and the computer. None of these cans involve build quality, which I found to be excellent. It's built like a tank, but it dries like a tank too compared to smaller units, so you have to get used to that. Pros. Huge cutting area and a pass-through door in the front means I spend a lot less time cutting wood to size to fit in a machine. Higher power means everything goes twice as fast. I have no trouble connecting it to the network and using it that way. It works out of the box with library with no tinkering needed or board upgrades. While the blower I thought sounds like a lawnmower, the actual Mampo laser cutter itself is very quiet. I'd assumed it would be louder so didn't worry about the blower noise, which was a mistake. If I'd known it was this quiet, I would have gotten a quieter blower to match. So if you get one, you should shop around for something quieter than I got. The movements are very fast. It's quick to set up between jobs and unlike most smart lasers, it's surrounded by access panels that make getting to the internals very easy. Also, unlike smart lasers, the parts on these are very easy to source and have many suppliers. Usually, every few years, you need to replace something. You'll be able to buy them more cheaply and put it in more easily on this than proprietary parts on a smart laser. Of course, unlike the Glowforge, everything runs locally. No internet connection required, so you don't have to worry about losing your laser cutter if the network goes down or the company goes out of business. Overall, the Monport is a high quality commercial laser cutter, well built and didn't give me any issues. If you have room for it, I'd opt for something like this over a smaller smart laser cutter in the same price range. After the first week, the usability is the same, but you get the extra power and the size. If all you have is a crafting room, I'd think about a small laser like the laser box or maybe the smaller mom port. Same factory, same quality. Still, I have to say the size is great if you have room for it. If you're interested, I've got a link to their store in the description box. That's it for today. Please share this video if you enjoyed it. The more people that know about me, the more cool stuff I can get to show you. Until next time, remember, if I can do it, Anyone can do it!